Uh, Kevin's here from Matters of Data. Kevin worked really hard to put this awesome Google Data Studio report together. Make a copy of that. You can follow along and learn today. Uh, this is a really exciting guest talk from Kevin. Uh, it's on Google Data Studios for beginners. You're going to learn the basics of Google Data Studio. Um, and you're going to learn a few things, which is how to get started and build your first dashboard, dashboard design best practices, and where to find resources and templates for long-term success. So Kevin's going to set you up today. Um, and if you don't know about him, he's got over 21 years of experience as an analytics professional, and he runs an analytics consulting service called Matters of Data. I'm going to drop that stuff in the chat too. Uh, but more importantly, I'm going to pass it over to you, Kevin, and you can uh, take it from here. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, just making sure everyone can hear me. Yep. Good, good stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, and I also uh, want to make a quick comment that uh, I love all the input and the engagement from, from, uh, from the audience, from, from Allison and Erica and everybody in the room. Um, I love the teaching and learning uh, coming from, you know, sort of by committee. Uh, uh, that's, that's what makes SEO Brunch really, really great. Um, all right, I'm going to try to share my screen. So uh, whenever, whenever I, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I do training sometimes for Google Data Studio for clients, I always like to start with showing them uh, this slide. Uh, and because I really, I, I find it really helps with framing up, um, you know, what you're trying to do and what you're, and it really helps sort of focus in on, you know, separating out what's really important to the dashboard and what sort of nice to have because uh, there's a lot there. You can pull in a lot of metrics, but if it's really not um, being tied to a business question, then uh, you, you know, you might be wasting your time. So uh, whenever I start, basically um, at the end of the day, you know, here you have, um, you're trying to translate um, what Google Analytics and by extension, Google Data Studio um, is offering you into answering useful business questions like, how do I get more people to my website? Um, once they're on there, how do I keep them on there? And then ultimately, how do I, you know, get them to do the thing that I want them to do on the website, whether it's buy something or um, get to know about your brand or whatever it might be, it could be an outlink. So essentially what you're trying to do with Google Data Studio um, is, is have the ability to get you closer. It might not answer the, the question right away, but get you closer uh, to an answer to answer these specific questions. And so uh, the, what Google Analytics generally gives you, and we're gonna get to the Google Data Studio dashboard in a second is it frames things up in those, in, in these three buckets as well. Um, the audience and acquisition um, reports typically talk about the different types of people that are coming to your website and they can help you with getting more people to your website. Uh, the behavior reports uh, that the, or bucket we'll call it is uh, more again, you know, once they're on your website and how are they behaving and where are they going and what are they clicking on or scrolling through. And then ultimately the third bucket is conversions and, and, and really sort of um, expanding on how many people are, are, you know, achieving the goal that you want them to achieve on your website. Um, so how does that translate to uh, a dashboard? Um, Typically my, you know, my vanilla template, I guess, is, you know, my, my starting point for most websites. Um, it, 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 I have three pages in my Google Data Studio dashboard that follow those same three buckets as Google Analytics. And so generally speaking, as a starting point, um, that first page will talk about the audience and, um, you know, how many people are coming in and, and that side of things. And then the next page will, will cover content and, and where people are visiting on the website. And then there's a bit of a breakdown on the, on the goals uh, and engagement as well. So I keep that, uh, those sort of three buckets in mind whenever, whenever I start with, um, with Google uh, Data Studio dashboards. So uh, 
one of the things I want to talk about today um, was just a few cool things that are about that that are related to Google Data Studio. Um, if, if it seems intimidating because it's just it's a lot of data and a lot of dashboards, um, I think the easiest way to look at Google Data Studio is you can kind of treat it like um, a PowerPoint um, presentation. If you're familiar with dragging and dropping images or, or text into PowerPoint, uh, it's really not too much further of a leap to, uh, to manipulate uh, a Google Data Studio dashboard. Um, so uh, we'll walk through a couple examples soon, but um, really it's, it's sort of that similar process, like in two clicks in PowerPoint, you can, you can have an image in there. In the same way, you can, you can have an image or a text uh, box going in Google Data Studio. The difference is really the, the, um, the data, I guess. It's the, it's the fact that there's um, a live or semi-live, we'll get to that as well a little bit later, connection to, uh, to data. In fact, when you're changing, when you're looking at it, it's actually querying Google Analytics, it's querying it live and then bringing the results and displaying it in a visual way. So that's, that's kind of the cool uh, thing about Google Data Studio and, and how it's sort of a better version of, of, of a PowerPoint. Um, one thing, uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna sort of talk a little bit more about how to uh, later on, but um, the neat thing here basically is that there's this view mode and that's this is how you interact, the, an end user would interact with a, a dashboard. And then there's an edit mode. So um, you, you won't see it in this particular dashboard um, because of, um, uh, I think I only set it to, to view permissions, so you wouldn't be able to see that particular button. But if you were to copy this and make your own copy of it, uh, you'll see you'll see that you'll have that ability to toggle back and forth between edit and view so that you can make changes to, uh, to the dashboard as you see fit. Um, and then if you once you're in that edit mode, um, you can then go ahead and make changes uh, to everything. Um, but again, we're going to, we're going to talk about the how to a little bit later. For now, what I wanted to show you is another one of the cool things about Google Data Studio is the fact that even though you're in this view mode, um, it's not necessarily what you might think of as static and that you can't really manipulate it or, or play, with, uh, play with the dashboard. Um, they have these neat things as well called controls. And these controls, when you plop them in there, they give you the ability, even in view mode, uh, to play with some of the numbers. So for example, if, if you were actually more interested uh, in say the last week instead of the last month, you can play with a date range, um, hit apply and everything uh, requeries live and pulls data from, uh, in this case, Google Analytics um, and updates all the numbers for you. Um, so I'll, uh, the, and, and then even more so these controls not, not only applies to dates, but you can also apply to say, let's just say you had a global um, dashboard for your whole website, but you were interested in organic, you could uh, now with a couple of clicks make the lens of the entire dashboard uh, only organic search. And it'll give you all the numbers and everything that you want to know about the website specifically related to organic search. Um, so it's relatively easy to kind of go to, to go back and forth and play with these controls. Um, so that's great. So let's talk about the, uh, the actual content and why um, I have these particular attributes or these particular charts in, um, in my vanilla dashboard and why it's in, in the, uh, the, the starting point, I guess. Again, for your particular website, you're going to be, uh, you know, you can change it so that it really is customized to your particular needs and what you're interested in tracking. But um, for this, this, this is just like a high level starting point uh, that you can build off of so that you're not starting with a blank page and, uh, and, and, uh, and you know, really not really knowing where to start. Uh, so typically we're on the first page, like I said, I, I always start with uh, just the traffic. Let's, you know, let me know a few things about traffic so that at a glance, I can look at this and, and, and see how things are going. Um, I set this one up 
this particular dashboard up to compare to the previous period. So whatever the date range is that is set up here, in, in this case, uh, this is the last seven days, I thought we had it as uh, um, 30 days, but we can uh, absolutely just leave it as seven days for now. Um, it'll also, it'll compare these particular numbers and say whether things are going up or things are going down relative to the previous seven days. There's also a quick sort of note here in this chart that you see the previous seven days. Um, but you can also make it year over year, or you can also customize your comparison period so that it's, it's really more relevant to you. Um, but here, typically, uh, you know, just at a high level, you want to see things like, all right, well, the, um, um, how much traffic am I getting? Is it up versus the previous period? Again, at a glance, you should be able to see that things are green and looking up and everything's great. This is just some dummy data that, uh, that Google provides. Um, and so you don't, this isn't anybody's um, personal website. I think it's the Google Merchandise Store. They have some sample data sources that you can connect to. And then once you get to the traffic quality, it's talking about how engaged people are with, um, with your website. Again, did engagement go up? Um, are people bouncing more often than, than before or less often? Um, meaning, uh, and I, I'm not sure about everyone's comfort level with all these metrics, but essentially bounce rate is um, if you arrive uh, on the website and then you just leave without interacting in any other way uh, with the website. Uh, and then how long people typically spend and then how many people are, are, are doing the thing that you want them to do. So this is just sort of a top level thing that I always like to start with. It's just sort of a, a lay of the land type uh, thing. And then right below that, I like to look at the, the time, uh, how, how things are going over time. And, and um, what if, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna refresh this right now because it doesn't seem to let me want to let me um, change the dates for some reason. So uh, that's the thing with, that's what happens with the live demo. Um, so while it's refreshing, I'll talk a little bit more about what else is on the, um, on this first page. Typically it's, um, you know, finding out something out more about the audience itself. So Google has, all kinds of information around demographics and what device people are using. And again, you can sort of see how device usage evolves over time. Like if you take, pick a, a previous date range and then compare it to um, the, a more recent date range, you can see how um, the share of device usage changes over time. Um, so again, you can, that you sort of heard that, have that interactive uh, ability with the dashboard um, and it's not necessarily something that's just static that you're staring at. And then uh, when it comes to geography, I, I, I like, you know, the map is nice to look at, but I feel like the, uh, it's a lot more digestible to look at a table and, and perhaps use a heat map feature to see um, w what the most popular areas are um, ge geographically for the traffic of your website. And then I like to, uh, to have it at uh, two different levels, maybe zoomed out a bit on the region level, uh, in Canada's case, it's the province, and then zoomed in a little bit further on the city level uh, to really help um, both to give that lens of, of, uh, of how, um, you know, how important specific regions are for you. Um, all right, so that's, that's the first page. Then we move on to content. And uh, again, as a starting point, uh, I like to consider four questions that will help somewhat describe how people are, are navigating um, throughout your website. Um, in this case, in the Google um, website here, the merchandise website, um, the questions that you're, you're answering are, okay, so when they arrive, what's the first page they see? Um, in this case, the home page is overwhelming, the most popular one. And if that's the case, then typically, okay, well, where do they go next? Um, so it's not really describing an entire, you know, long flow. Um, Google Analytics, at least in its previous version, um, 
wasn't very good at that flow chart. It, it just wasn't very user friendly. It's, uh, so um, coming up with your own way of trying to figure out the flow, I think um, was really the only way to go. Google Analytics 4, I won't get into Google Analytics 4, that's a whole other thing, but they have a new evolution of Google Analytics now, which is trying to tackle that. Uh, and it, they are making more interactive reports within Google Analytics, where you can actually see um, flow of behavior, not only within pages, but actual clicks from getting from point A to point B. Um, but again, for now, the, the story is, where do they land? Where do they go next? Overall, what are the most popular pages uh, on my website? And then um, this one is always interesting. What, what's the last page that they see? And if there are any issues that um, you know, could be addressed, uh, if you're noticing a particular page that um, people might be getting stuck with and actually leaving your website, um, then, then these four questions can help um, start your journey in figuring out the flow of how people are interacting with your website. And then finally, I like to um, I like to talk about uh, is this one's really a sort of a, a breakdown. I, I'm trying to bring in um, the conversions and the and the goals into uh, into this this vanilla dashboard, but also overlay it with um, segmenting um, the traffic. Um, so you you want to know how many people are converting and whether whether that's that's up or down, but you also want to know um, you know, which particular channels are converting uh, the most or the least and, and identifying opportunities. And so this first table um, can let you know by channel uh, the conversion rate and whether, you know, um, in this particular case, the, you know, direct or other seems to be um, fighting above their weight in terms of conversion rate relative to the other channels. And then you can use that information to decide um, how you want to attack the other channels or the or those that are succeeding as well. And then because Google Analytics sort of groups all of the social networks into one, um, you can break those down further. The same chart just broken down into social and broke, break that down into referral uh, as well so that you can get a, just sort of a zoomed in view um, about where your traffic is coming from how they're performing on the website, and then ultimately how many are converting and how many are fighting above or below their weight. And then you can sort of decide what to do from there. That's it from a content standpoint. Um, and running through that, I'm gonna run into, I'm gonna run through a couple examples on how to sort of get started with, uh, with Google Data Studio. So uh, um, Kenzie, thanks for sharing out this, um, this template. If you're uh, ever interested in trying to, um, to start your own and you wanted to copy this, essentially you would start here, um, these sort of two squares in the top right hand corner. Um, you can now, it basically creates a copy for yourself. And all you have to do is assuming you have Google Analytics running on your website is instead of pointing to this sample Google Analytics data, you point to your, um, your source, your, your Google Analytics data source. You create new, and it's really intuitive to go through to, um, to find your data source. And then all the data is automatically refreshed. You don't have to do anything else besides point to the new data source. And it'll look identical, but will have your, um, you know, your data in the background instead, instead of Google Analytics data. Um, that's the first step is making that copy. Um, just wanna make sure there aren't any questions at this point. Oh my gosh, there's a lot in the chat. I miss, I've been missing. Is there anything that um, we wanted to, to pause and talk about before I continue? I still can't see the chat for some reason. Um, if you can't see the chat, just uh, there's a quick one from Allison here. Um, yeah. What is the purpose behind the darker, lighter shading in your columns? Simply that as numbers get higher, they get darker. Uh, wondering as higher number and bounce is not good. Yeah, I guess it's sort of the meaning of those shadings. Uh, are they good or bad? Great question. All right. So 
from a visualization standpoint, Google Data Studio offers um, different ways to format your table. So um, again, this will, cover, well, this will overlap a little bit with the how-to, but if you um, select a chart and you want to modify it, um, it, essentially on the right side here, you have two tabs. One is related to the data that you're trying to pull in, like what specific columns do you want to show? And then the other tab is about style and how do you want it to look? And so for each one of these columns uh, that are displayed here, you can customize how you want them to look. Uh, and you have three choices. You can have uh, just a straight up number, which is like the purchases column here. They have what's called a heat map, which is what um, is the sort of formatting, the colorful formatting that we're seeing here. And with that heat map, uh, with the heat map option, uh, yes, the darker the, um, the color, the higher the number. And in fact, if it's really dark, it really is sort of like a scaled darkness. Like if it's like this first one, you can see that overwhelmingly direct uh, is, the, is the highest number by a lot. And it's also much darker. So it really just helps with, uh, again, just getting that at a glance um, answer that you're looking for. Um, it's not necessary, but it just, it just helps. And the third option um, for this is a bar chart. You can actually, um, if you prefer it as a visual, a, a bar chart, you can, you can in incorporate that um, instead of the heat map or the number. Yeah, and I apologize. For some reason I keep clicking on chat, but it's not, um, I can't see it. So if there's anything that, again, that I'm missing. Um, they, they seem happy there. I think they're all good. Sounds good. Um, all right. So one of the things uh, that we'll that we'll walk through here um, is you know under the how to umbrella, we're going to look at. Let's just try to uh, add a particular chart to this uh, to this dashboard so that. Um, like I feel like this is a little incomplete. I feel like one of the things that we should see right off the bat is not only how many users, but we should have that channel breakdown. That should be on the first page. So what we can do, um, if we wanna make room for it, you can take a chart that already exists, you select it and you uh, make it a little smaller and we can make room for perhaps a table over here. And when it comes to adding things, um, it's basically up here is where you click. So if you wanted to add text, this is letter A. If you want to add, add an image, you can upload it. Again, this one's just like PowerPoint. But if it's a chart that you wanted to add, uh, it gives you all these visualizations. You, you, you click on add a chart and you, you can choose whatever you'd like. Um, so in this case, let's add a table. Um, it already throws in some default um, numbers for you. And then what you, so it has a breakdown, it has some metrics already, and it has a table that's kind of um, already with the theme of your dashboard. And you can modify it so that you can perhaps see how many um, of each channel um, are coming in now. So what you do in this particular case, you would, under the data tab on the right side, um, you have dimensions, so how you wanna break things down. Um, and you, with it, called the default channel grouping is what you'd want. You'd get rid of the date because um, that's what, the, what they gave you, but even though you're not interested in it. Um, and then you can either, you can stick with uh, users. I prefer sessions, um, it's kind of a tomato tomato thing, um, but um, this generally will tell you how many from each channel are coming in. And in fact, you can rename it as, as um, you see fit. Um, there's this little edit icon on the left-hand side. And if, in case you don't wanna say default channel grouping because it takes too long, you can rename it to just channel and it shows up as channel. Under style, you might not see a need to um, have row numbers. So you can remove those row numbers. And then you just kind of, um, spread it out as needed. There's also something down here at the bottom called um, um, pagination, which um, you can remove that as well if you wanna keep it cleaner. And then now you have uh, a breakdown 
by channel um, of how things are going. Um, and if you further wanted to know, um, well, anyways, we're, we're going to leave that like that. Um, so that's just a quick example of how to add an element to, uh, to Data Studio dashboard. Um, I, there's a lot more to this. I, I will say that this is really just, uh, I wanted to make sure that you had a starting point um, on um, where, where to go and to have some ideas on, on what best practices are. Um, happy to answer more questions now. Uh, and of course, you'll be having it, you'll have the templates and uh, hopefully it'll help you get you started on your Google Data Studio journey. That's it for me. Thanks so much, Kevin. That was awesome. Um, anybody's looking to learn more about Kevin, I just saw LinkedIn that uh, he has another talk coming up uh, later this week. So if you join the SEO Brunch LinkedIn group, we posted a link to that talk that's coming up. And we're gonna open up the floor to questions. We'll start with Kevin, because if you got some specific data studio questions, let's, let's get them in now while Kevin's fresh and still going and still <laughs> alert. And we can we can get it a little bit further along. So um, uh, Allison's asking also.